I want to welcome you back to week three of our series, What's So Amazing About Grace. And this week we continue our study of that grace. And in a more fine tuned specific way, by looking at an aspect of God's grace that I believe with all my heart really makes me anger at us, I am going to do that. So today we're going to open God's word and we are going to discover the power of God's healing. I'll be honest with you, one of the reasons I felt so led to talk about this particular aspect of God's grace is because through a series of recent events, I have been very clearly reminded that none of us, none of us, none of us just fail through life, pain free, body free, with not a worry in the world. We all have seasons of life where we experience pain and problems part of it. Sometimes those hurt like this. And we do everything we can to put on a strong, I've got it all together front. But the truth is, we all have emotional scars that no one sees, but they're there. Not only do they have a word, but they're there. So today I'm really excited about this message because so later this morning, we're going to open God's word and we're going to discover. One of the most encouraging verses in all of Scripture, a verse that highlights the power of God's healing grace. I really believe that this particular life and future can make a difference. So I look forward to sharing this message with you a little bit later. As we discovered this morning, there will be two foundational verses. That will help guide us down this pathway together. And the first one, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the most encouraging verses in all the scripture. It's a verse that illuminates the power of God's grace. It comes from the book of Psalms, and I would strongly encourage you to memorize this verse, type it verse in your Bible, for those moments when you might need it much like a picture. Here it is. Psalm 147, 3. God heals the broken heart. Binds up the wounds. God heals the broken heart. Binds up the wounds. Isn't that powerful? Now, I must confess, there have been times in my life when I have used. I test so hard, depression, thinking its way in, discouragement, threatening to think my inner fear or my relationship. And when I move back to times of fear, I long full force into the broken heart. And this verse is one of those verses that always seems to lift my spirit and encourage my heart to know. That God heals the broken heart and he binds up the wounds. Based on some conversations I've had with some of you, I know there are several of you here this morning who join us online. You are thinking, I really need to get that healed. I could really use some healed grace. Maybe you find yourself wondering, why? Why does he do it? How does God heal the broken heart and pity the wounds? And the answer may surprise you. In Romans 12, we learn that we see God does this by changing the way we think, by changing our minds, by changing how we see God, by changing how we see the pain. And more specifically, by changing how we see ourselves. Here's the verse in Romans 12. Let God transform you by giving you a high performance value in Christ. Let God transform you by doubling your income, maximizing your investments. The PMI version, the PMI version, 
If you hold on to the first to be lost, it is very to participate. It's sometimes very difficult to be what we anticipate the past and what we see the future. And it's in this gap between the two that only God can be there. And if you dwell in the things of God, and if you dwell in the past of God, what you will allow yourself to anticipate what we produce, what we allow yourself to anticipate from the future begins to think nearer what you've already received. Suddenly, all you're thinking about is your past, your direction, your living life, and the years you do it, focusing on the past, your direction, then becomes this kind of love that you have created of your own making to keep yourself from getting hurt in your past. But in reality, all this type of thinking really does is become this massive barrier that blocks anyone from getting close enough to you to truly love you and respect you. To truly be Just because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. In other words, our belief determines our behavior. The way we think determines how we behave. That means if you have this view of yourself and you view yourself as a loser, chances are you will progress down a path where that begins to eventually come true. If you see yourself as a victim, you will likely put yourself in situations where you can be victimized. If you see yourself as a failure, you may develop habits on the outside that reinforce how you view yourself on the inside, and you will begin to fail time, time, time again. As you think on the inside, so it is our beliefs become our behavior. The way we think. So it's old, work, hate, the complaining. Over and over again, we go back to the past. Some of which were planted there to do the work of healing, and they were planted there by people who were supposed to love and care for us. And they gave us this distorted view of ourselves by saying things like, You can't do that. You're a failure. You failed in the past. You rejected the past. You'll probably fail and be rejected again in the future. And eventually, because of all of that onslaught of negativity, self preservation kicked in. And we begin to rebel, and we begin to fight back. And we rebel and we fight back by saying things that like, I'm going to do the very same thing that this time not to do. I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to do exactly what they tell me I can do. And on some level, that sounds very bad. Even a bit pull yourself up by the bootstrap to it. Right? But the reality. The reality is you're still reacting to your rejection rather than submitting to your truth. So let me lovingly encourage you to stop reacting and stop submitting. Christ has accepted you. You have been chosen as a bride. So there are a few people in this world who may never ever say to you, I accept you for who you are. You are perfect just the way you are. I accept you for what you've already accomplished. I accept you unconditionally. So someone, some people may never say to that. Say that to you. You know what I say about that? Good work. Good working work. Listen, you do not need other people's approval to be successful. You do not need other people's approval to be happy in life. There are over 6 billion people on the face of this planet where they don't care which one or two of them they want to. There are plenty of other people who really care, who really love you, and not judge you, and not put a finger so high that you can be given a pain in the heart. How are you bad? In fact, there are people. Right here in this very room, who have 
and now for the last five years, I've been working hard to get out of here for the last five years. Thank you. I'm not going to do that. 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 I don't know if most of you have accepted Christ. It's easy to know. It's really easy to know that the core of your being is Christ has been saved, that you have been saved by God. Now, I was pleased. I was pleased. I was pleased. I was pleased. I kept focusing on the greatness I kept thinking, God is so amazing, so great, so powerful. He created this vast universe and the cosmos, and He's very, very easily could have created all of this and left this there and out of the equation and the world would have been spinning on without me and not me to be. He could have let them be. I just seemed to be so amazing. Even for someone as broken and imperfect and stupid as God. God even says to this God, God says the perfect people of God says, 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 Come back next week, as we're going to continue talking about, we're going to talk about grace for seven minutes, but next week, it kind of sucks into this idea of healing grace. So today's message is going to break into this. This way, it's not the truth. Come back next week, and we're going to go even deeper into this idea of not healing grace. Before we go on in this way, let's call it grace. Come to me and say, Please, I'm so sorry. And the Holy Spirit is the power of the Holy Spirit. And the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 